All right, so let's talk about Blab. For you guys that have not hosted a Blab yet, obviously you have an account because you're on here watching, right? Blab.im. It's pretty much, it's really simple, which is one of the reasons people prefer Blab over Google Hangouts. As you can see on the screen, you have four people, up to four people on camera. Whereas Hangout, you can have 10, but it doesn't look like Hollywood Square. So there's one person, whoever's talking, is on the screen on Google Hangout, and the other nine are along the bottom. So here you can have four people interacting at the same time. You can kick people off and add people in, and it's open to the public. And Hangout, you can have public or private. So basically, to start a new Blab, you can schedule it ahead of time up to, I think, 30 days, or you can start one now, live. So you just go into your profile and then click start a new blab. It's a tab right on the right hand side and you'll put in a title, something that would be enticing and engaging for people to come and want to watch you. Um, you put in the date, you can add a photo. So I usually put in a photo, a headshot of a person that I'm uh, featuring. So once a month network now features an inner circle member or virtual member. And once a month, we have a VIP. And that VIP call actually happens to be today. So if you guys are still on Blab at 1 o'clock, you should come back. So I'm interviewing uh, Subi Zimmerman, Instagram gal. <laughs> we'll be talking Instagram and social media at 1 o'clock Eastern time. So come back then. Um, so basically, 30 days early, I set up the Blab, and then I take that link the embed link, and I put it uh, on, on my event calendar. You can embed it in a blog. There's an HTML code that it creates. But you also can take the URL code from the browser and share that on social. And then you can tweet it out, share it on Facebook, get people to subscribe ahead of time. But when you go live, you can notify all of your followers. You can tweet it out, share it on Facebook. You can record it if you want to. There's a little button on the left that says red button. It says record sometimes. Actually, Blab is still a little glitchy. So sometimes there is no red button. So then you need to put someone else on camera to hold the Blab open, leave, come back, and the red button appears like magic. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, so things to be conscious of when you're doing a Blab. Sound is the biggest issue. I've had issues with headphones in, headphones out. Other people can't hear. Other people can't talk. So I'm going to invest in a uh, Yeti microphone so that the sound quality is better because I do these a lot. And some of the people I'm interviewing are pretty high-profile people. So I want to have a high-quality video because once you do a video and record it, you can upload it to YouTube with one click. So as soon as you edit the blab, there's a button on the left that says upload to YouTube, which sometimes takes two clicks to get it to work, but it does eventually show up on your YouTube channel. And then you can go into your YouTube channel once it's done uploading and edit the text. So when, when you have videos on YouTube, the best thing to do is to add your, the URL of your website or a landing page that you want people to go to that would make sense and relate. And always start with HTTP colon slash slash so that it links, all right? So that you are bringing people from YouTube to your website, to your opt-in offer, wherever it is that you want to send them. And then add some text that is searchable. So then when people are typing on YouTube, which is the second largest search engine after Google, they find your video because you're using keywords in your description, okay? You can also reuse your Blab video on your blog. So you can take the code, afterwards <laughs> there's a HTML code of the recording, you just right click copy that and embed it into your WordPress site if you have WordPress, and then just add a little text to it and people can watch the recording. So it's great. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, so Marion is saying as far as a microphone, she says the ATR2100 is the best quality for women's voices. Okay, I'll check that out, that's awesome, thank you. All right, um, what else? So when you're on camera, besides the sound issue, you also can should pay attention to what's behind you. So you see Jeannie's got a really nice background there, pretty neutral, little pop of color. <laughs> you know, the stylist says, oh, the pop of color. <laughs> 
Yeah. And then mine behind me, you know, if I turn my computer this way, you see a few papers on my desk. But what you see on camera is basically my wall color, which is a Network Now logo color, a pop of pink. We got the chair over there. So you know, everything kind of ties in with the branding, right? You don't want to have a big cluttered mess behind you. Um, I saw somebody on Vlad that does it in front of like a green, an emerald green, like, full drape and it looks like she's channeling the wizard of oz in my opinion so whatever look you're going for just make sure it kind of is professional and kind of you know Vlad is more relaxed and conversational but you want to at least look like you have your stuff together you know what i mean you don't want to look like you're totally disorganized um yeah marion i yeah i still haven't typed in that uh link yet have i all right let me do that okay so you guys, if you want to be part of the full challenge where you try a platform and I share your information, go to this link that I just post, posted in the chat and just put in, click the bookings tab and put in your name and email. And then I will send you tips every day this week. And I'll also connect with you online on social and share your videos that you come up with. Okay. All right. So what else for Blab? Anyone else have any other questions on how to use Blab? So lighting is also important. Mine's a little dim today. So this, I don't think this room has great lighting. I usually do, when I do Periscopes or Facebook Lives, I'm usually in my car, because it's really good lighting outside in my car for some reason, I have Wi-Fi. But for Blab, I'm here on my desktop, and the, the lighting's not great, but you can see me. So if you had like a light a window open behind you, you'd probably be really dark, and the window would be bright, it wouldn't be great. So just keep in mind the lighting, the sound, the background, you know, what you're wearing, that kind of stuff. All right. So I think we're pretty good for Blab. Super simple to use. So when you start the Blab, you click the, in the middle of the screen, there's a join button, which I'm sure you see there's an open seat. When you call, when you first are the host and call in and start it, you click that as well. And then you can allow people to come on camera with you. You just open the seats or you can lock the seats. If you don't want anyone coming on, you know, I only allow my VIPs and anyone participating in my programs or my upper le level members to come on camera because I know them. I have had, I had one blab where none of my members were on. So it was like a free for all. And I was letting everybody that was on the blab come on camera, which was fun until the guy from Turkey showed up in bed. So that was bad. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, okay. So no more of that. No, it's not good. You get some trolls online. They have nothing better to do with their lives, right? Oh, if somebody skip is saying avoid fake backgrounds. Yeah, don't be too fake, right? Yeah, this is really how my office looks every day. So I'm not, yeah, anyway. <laughs> All right, so any questions on Blab, we're good? Yeah, all right, so Periscope. We could talk about Periscope a little bit. Periscope is a mobile app, okay? It really works better. You can watch Periscope on your desktop or laptop, but to make a video, you wanna go on your phone. And I, it's for Android or iOS. So basically you just click the little Periscope app. So if you don't have the Periscope app, go to the app store and download it. You click that little app, And you can, if you don't yet have a profile, you can create that from your Twitter profile. Same with Blab, same way you did for Blab, you do for Periscope. And at the bottom of your app, there's, I don't know if you, how well you can see my phone, probably not very well, no. Who is this person? No, can't see, too bright. All right, so at the bottom of your app, you have four icons. One is like a TV, which shows you everything that's going on right now with the people that you're following. Then there's a little globe, that is kind of a map of all the live streams that are going on all over the world for people that are you have their location on. So if you want to be found on that global map, you would put your location on when you do your Periscope live. But if you're in your house and if you're a woman and you don't want people to know exactly where you are, you might want to put your location off. Because so I once did a Periscope and left it on by mistake and I was in my house and I had my daughter on screen and some creepy guys that typed in the chat, coming over to whatever address, 
in a few minutes to party with you and your daughter. I was like, okay, troll, go away. Uh, so yeah, so there was my lesson on leaving the location on or off. Then the next button is how you actually start a Periscope stream. And the fourth button are the people that you're following. So if you click the little people on the right, you'll see everybody you're following. You can, there, when you click that on the top left, there is a little um, magnifying glass so you can search for people. So one person I follow is, his name is Zach Spuckler. He's 22 years old. He lives in Toledo, Ohio. And he just started last year and he's rocketed on Periscope. He does like three a day usually. And he gives out all kinds of great information on Facebook Live, uh, Facebook ads, Periscope, digital products, that kind of stuff. So he's great. It's very generous. But there's a lot of people you just go in there and search and you'll find and you can just follow them. I wouldn't follow too many people because the alerts on Periscope are kind of annoying, but you can turn off the sound and just have the alerts come on, the notifications come on your screen without the whistle. Because if you have whistles going all day, it can make you crazy and then you may um, just turn it off. Rhonda, the, his name is Zach Spuckler. Yeah, he's good. Zach, Z-A-C-H. All right. And then the top right button when you're on the people screen is you. So when you click on that, you see your profile and you'll see how many hearts you've been given. So hearts are kind of like kudos. You see these little hands down here? I'm clicking on genies here. Those are props, which are like high fives on Glab, but they don't accumulate on Glab. So it's not really a social proof thing. It's very, it's um, contained within the Blab and then they disappear. So let's say you have a lot of people going out. I'm sorry, I'm back to Blab again. But if you have a lot of people coming in and out of camera, on and off camera on your Blab, the people with the, the top four with the most props are the ones that show up on the, re, on the replay and their, their headshots. If you only have four or less, the props don't really matter. All right. On Periscope, what you get are hearts. It's like likes on Facebook, right? So that's kind of a social proof thing because it accumulates. Just be sure that you, when you set up your profile, that you include a link to your website. They give you one link in your profile. So no matter what social platform you're do, talking about, you're using, you should always have a link to your website or landing page that you want to send people to. So they can, the whole point is to drive everyone back to your site and get them to opt in and get on your mailing list, right? There's also other benefits, of course, to doing live stream video. So when you click the third button, that's where you start broadcast. It switches to this screen. So it's a picture of whatever's happening right there. And then they start broadcast. So basically, you just type. It says, what are you seeing now? So it basically wants you to create a title. So whatever you do, you can make it something engaging and exciting. So people, when they see it come up, they'll be like, yeah, I want to learn about that or I want to talk about that. So they come to your Periscope. You want to use hashtags because this gets sent out on Twitter automatically. So when people are following certain hashtags, it will be found. No hashtags, no find you. <laughs> you also can include emojis. So some people put in a crap ton of emojis and make it like so that they stand out. So you have a list of all these text notifications and then you see somebody with like pow, fire, hundreds, all this stuff going on. Um, so also when you're on this screen, right above the start broadcast, let me see, there we go. See that red star, start broadcast button? Right above there you see there's four emojis. The one on the left that looks like a little airplane triangle, that is the location setting. So if it's dark white, it means on. And if you press it, you can turn your location off. Okay, so for each Periscope stream that you do, you can turn your location on or off. So if you don't want people to know your exact address, you can turn it off. But if you want them to be, to be found when the people search by the map, turn it on. Um, you can also lock the Periscope so that it's a private thing. Um, their third one is basically determines who can chat. So if you only want um, your the people you follow to be able to chat, 
to keep the trolls out, <laughs> then you can turn that on. But the problem with that is you don't get to network and meet new people. So the whole point of this is to engage with your audience. So when, when people are writing in the chat on Blab or they're typing in the chat on Periscope, it's really important that you pay attention to who's saying what to you and that you respond same way you would do on text on Facebook or anywhere else on, or on Twitter, wherever you're, you're posting your, um, doing your social media marketing. Just if you don't, the whole point is social. The word social is the important word, okay? It's social. It's supposed to be a conversation, a way for you to be, uh, engage and communicate with your audience. So just make sure you're following. And you can, if anyone puts anything in the chat that is inappropriate or they're, you know, it's obvious they're a troll, you can go click right on the chat text <clears throat> they send. We'll take you to their profile and you can click block and they never can get it into your per periscopes again. The fourth icon there above the start broadcast button is the Twitter, automatic Twitter post. So if you wanted to send out a tweet when you go live, you keep that on. If for some reason you don't want to tweet it out, you would turn that off. All right, so you just type in your title, put a hashtag, put in some fun emojis, maybe one, two, don't go crazy. And then uh, location on or off, I would say Twitter on, lock off, chat open, hit start broadcast. And it starts with your screen facing at. So it'll always, like right behind me there, it's starting there. But when you double tap the screen, it will switch the camera onto you. So when you start, Usually people see my dashboard because I'm in my car. There's nothing beautiful to put the uh, camera on. But just keep in mind that whatever your camera is pointing on is what you're going to start your, your uh, recording with. There is a setting on Periscope where you can automatically save your videos to your phone. If you don't do that, it'll only be live on Periscope for 24 hours. If you want your videos to be repurposed, you have a choice. If you don't like it, you can always delete it off your phone. You save it to your phone, then you have the option of uploading it to YouTube and then putting that link on other social media and sharing it and getting more eyes on it on other platforms. There's also something called catch.me, which is spelled with a K. Let's see, there we go which will automatically say, if you sign up for that, it'll automatically save all your videos to catch. And then it creates like a channel with all your videos, which you can always go in and delete if you don't want a few of them in there. Um, let's see, any questions? No. So anyone have any questions about Periscope? The thing with Periscope is that when you first start, you don't really have an audience. You know, my first few Periscopes, I think I had like, uh, three people from the United States and everyone else was from Turkey. So <laughs> you, know, you get people with no vowels in their names. But uh, if, so Periscope, you have to do a few times a day, really. If you want to take it seriously and build an audience on Periscope, you got to be just jumping on there a few times a day and really just going for it, going full throttle. So if you did that for a little while, you'd build a great audience and then you'd have a great following. So my little friend, Zach, I think he has, let's see what he's got going on here. Uh, he has uh, 9,900 followers and no recent, well, no recent periscopes. Yeah, so when you search for somebody, let your Zach, okay? Here's my buddy. It's like, I don't know why I like this kid so much, but I do. I don't know if you can see him, but you see the profile underneath is his name. Underneath, then it shows the number of hearts. So he's 5,500,000 hearts. It shows his bio, his link to his website. Then it shows recent. That means how many periscopes has he had within the last 24 hours? The number of followers and the number he's following. Okay. So I think that kind of covers periscope. Yes. Anyone have any other questions? All right. The third one we're going to talk about today is Facebook Live. No, not Butler. Spuckler. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Zach and Z A C H. Zach's going to be very happy. We're talking about him so much today. 
There's a new Periscope web browser. I'm going to have to check that out, Donna. All right. So Facebook Live. I kind of like Facebook Live. I like Blab a lot because we can interact with each other on camera. So I can bring on VIPs. So for instance, for those that didn't hear, I have Sue B. Zimmerman coming on today at 1 o'clock. Next month in March, I have John Jantz. In April, I have Natalie McNeil. In May, I have Carol Roth, who wrote The Entrepreneur Equation. So the beauty of that is that I get to be on screen with these VIPs and offer this to my members. I'm sorry, whoever tried to call in, I only let my uh, top members come on because I had a little issue in Turkey with some man. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So let's jump over to Facebook Live. The benefit of Facebook Live is that you need, first, first of all, the restriction on Facebook Live is that you need to have an iOS device. So if you have an Android, you can't do it yet. It used to be that you needed to have a verified public figure page, but now you can do it from your personal profile as well. So you just open your Facebook app on your phone, and when you go to the status update box where it says what's on your mind, you click that as if you were just writing a regular post to Facebook. But now there is a fifth option. So the one on the left, if you open that up, it says there's a camera, which is if you want to post a photo. There is the little person with the uh, tag hanging off their neck, off their head. That's to tag someone. Then there's the smiley face, which basically can you can share your how you're feeling. Then you have the locator, which tells you if you want to add a location. And then the fifth new icon that you should see on your iPhone is Periscope Live. So when you type your title in for your Periscope Live, you can do it first before you hit the live icon or afterwards. So where it says what's on your mind, you can start typing there and then click the live or click the live and then add the title. It doesn't matter. You can make it public or make it for friends or make it for friends except, you know, whatever lists you have set up on Facebook, you can determine who's going to see your live videos on Facebook live. So basically you just type in the title and the camera the one thing you can do on Facebook Live versus Periscope is switch your camera to face you right away. Whereas on Periscope, you're pointing out for the first second until you double tap and turn it around. So basically, you just hit this. Okay, see that kind of that blue button basically just says go live. So once you type in your title, you go go live. People can chat and you can have a conversation with people. There is a little bit of a delay, maybe like 30 second delay between them typing and you seeing it for some reason. Um, one thing that's good about Facebook is your audience is already there. I'll let Jeannie on here. You know, there's so many people on Facebook right now. I think everyone except my husband, I said yesterday is on Facebook. So you have a huge audience of people. Whereas Periscope, there's not as many people as Facebook, obviously. Um, you also can see, you know, on Facebook, you have to have a profile that actually is, describes you. There's so many data points about each person that's on Facebook. Whereas on Periscope, sometimes you'll get like a gray head, some crazy name, no description, no no nothing. You know nothing about this person because they're hiding behind this like troll profile. Whereas on Facebook, you see actually who's on. So you see well, you'll see which of your friends are on watching you. If you do public, you'll only see the friends that are on. I think this is Kristen. Let's see. Is this you, Kristen, calling in? Let me see. Yes. Okay, we will let you in. <laughs> All right, girl. So has anyone um, used Periscope? Let's ask about that first. Anyone used Periscope as a viewer or as a uh, streamer? And Marion says as a viewer. Yeah. 
Periscope, you know, Blab is a lot easier because you actually have human interaction. I can look in Kristen's face and look in Jeannie's face and say, hey girl, what's going on? <laughs> but on Periscope or on Facebook Live even, you're basically looking at your phone and talking to glass. If, if people start writing, it's a lot easier because then you're like, can visualize who it is that's typing that and they're there and you start talking to them. But it, it takes a bit of uh, mind training to kind of talk, talk like you're talking to a human, even though you're talking to a piece of glass, right? So Kristen Smedley, she <laughs> runs a nonprofit called Curing Retinal Blindness Foundation. And she started doing Facebook Live and is blown away by the results, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy pants. It's crazy. It's, crazy. it's so funny because it happened all at the exact time I needed it to happen. So when I made our big announcement for our foundation, used Facebook Live, I did it at the worst time, Friday at 3.30. Nothing ever gets shared at Friday at 3.30, but I had to get it out there. And it's over 6,000 views on the weekend. Wow. Yeah, it's it was it's perfect. And you just have to get over like I have another hat on because I just I still have to go do my workout. But you just have to get past the what you look like and get your message out there. And actually I'm finding that people are coming up to me. They came up to me at my son's gig this weekend at soccer tournaments saying that they it was almost like it was more relatable because I just had breaking news and I had to get it out there and I didn't have time to go get all fluffed up. Um, I did use our one of our logo um, canvas things that we've done at an event before behind me. So at least people had that visual of what it was going to focus on. But it was amazing. It's amazing. All right. Let's also talk about your um, experience with Blab because I taught you how to use Blab and you have found that to be an amazing way to connect with your whole community, correct? Yeah. And it's actually branching out into other communities now. So one of the challenges with being in the blind community is connecting with people. There's so few, right? And our diseases are so rare. So I did right at the beginning of December, grab some folks that I had met. One was from Boston, one was from England, some experts, quote experts in the field of raising blind kids. And we looked at, we actually sampled, like we were holding stuff up, toys for blind kids. Cause that's the biggest question when, one of the biggest questions when it comes to the holidays. Um, what what family members want to purchase for the kids so we it was it was so well received that everybody wants to do another one now on technology apps for blind kids and all different kinds of stuff in the field but now we're actually crossing over into all rare diseases because it's so hard to connect with folks and you can't afford to go to all the conferences so we're going to use blab to do that because putting a face with things is so much easier for a lot of people going through something as devastating as a rare disease. It's just, I think it's easier on them to put a face to it than be on a conference call. Oh yeah, definitely. It ramps up the no like, and trust for marketing, but it just, it's just builds that relationship so much faster than just an email or even a phone, you know, phone calls better than that. But this is great because you get to see people's personalities and hear them and, you know, get face to face with them. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Jeannie, you, um, I forced you into doing a Facebook Live on Friday, yes. and I see you did your own on Sunday. It was yes. awesome. <laughs> so your first video, it's over 400 views already that I did post it on my page, on my pros, not my page, my personal profile. And now you have hundreds on the one that you did on Sunday, right? And people, lots of comments, people saying, you know, great content. So it's only what one, two minutes long, one minute long, two minutes long, fifty-eight seconds. Fifty-eight seconds. Wow. Yeah, you can deliver a lot of content in a minute. If well, you're doing I, it's it's funny because I think I think you said when we were doing the first one, what do you want to? What do the women want to hear? What what are the the everyday things that the women want to hear? And I was getting dressed on Sunday morning after church and I was like, okay, I need to just throw something on. And it was warm out. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is probably, I'm not the only one thinking, what the heck am I going to wear? You know? And right. it's just really feel like if you're transitioning into spring now. So I was like, all right, let's go. Right. Jamie said, okay. I'm going to do it. <laughs> That's the perfect transition. Once you pick your platform, 
58 seconds to greatness, Rhonda says. That's right, girl. Thank you. <laughs> so the next next thing is to talk about what you're gonna say, what are you gonna share? So at, no matter what marketing you do, it always goes back to who do you serve? What are they struggling with? What are their desires, their needs, their wants, okay? No matter if you're doing live stream video, writing a blog, posting on social, doing events, Network, you know, whatever kind of marketing you're doing, it has to be, you have to keep in mind who you serve and what you do for them. Okay. So I'm not going to go on, you know, I'm not going to come on here and talk about cats or vegetables. <laughs> I'm not in the cat or vegetable market. What I do is teach people how to connect with other people, how to build relationships, how to market themselves, how to be step into their leadership role. How to get publicity. That's what I'm going to talk to you guys about, right? Because that's what I do for you. I help if you're struggling with how to use a certain tool or how do I market or how do I handle all this entrepreneurial stuff that's coming at me every day. That's what I'm going to focus on, right? So think about that. Who's your audience and what do you help them do? What are their struggles? So what kind of questions do they ask you all the time? What are they, what do they really need? Let me see who's trying to call in here. Uh, I can't let you guys on. Sorry, guys. Only my uh, inner circle and virtual members can get on camera. Or if uh, one of my VIP guests shows up, they can come on too. But I, I, I lock all my blabs. It's just my preference. Typically, people sometimes people have let you call in. Let's see. Tina wants to come on. All right, Tina. Let's see if your sound is back, girl. Yeah. All right. So you're going to basically choose Blab, Periscope, or Facebook Live and then come up with some content. So think about your audience, what you do for them, what they're struggling with, what questions they ask you a lot. So a good thing to do, I don't know if you use Evernote, but Evernote, Evernote no. is a, an app on your phone or on your, it's on your computer as well, and you can create notebooks, and it's basically digital notes. So rather than this on my desk, <laughs> All this is the go into Evernote pile. Everything need, can be put into Evernote and it's searchable. So you can, obviously you'd make notebooks and title your notes so that they make sense. But if you forget where you put something, you can just search for certain words or phrases and find your notes. And it syncs with all of your devices. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever device okay. you pick up, it's on there because it's web based. Right. And it's free up to a certain amount of storage. Yeah. So I haven't reached my max yet, and I have a lot of stuff on there. Um, but one notebook that you can create is Chat Mice. What is that noise? <laughs> <laughs> it's the cat from the cat. I don't know what's happening. I don't have a dog. Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> It's not me. I ideal client struggles. You can call the notebook and you can type in, you know, anything. Let's say you, if you have, a, if you're on a Facebook group with your ideal audience and they're asking all kinds of questions, when you meet people in person, when they call you on the phone, you know, my, the members, you guys are all members of network. Now you get, uh, since you're all inner circle members, you get 15 minutes a month with me on the phone. Well, I can keep track of all these issues that come up on every call. And those are the things I should create my content around. If I'm getting that certain question over and over again, that's what that's what people, a lot of people are struggling with. Uh, someone needs breakfast. Yeah, it did sound like a stomach rumbling, right? Hysterical. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was Cooper. Oh, Sorry. Oh, it was a dog? Oh, okay. It was yeah. a growl. A real growl. Okay. That was like stomach rumbling. Yeah. He's protective. He has no. <laughs> okay. So anyone have any questions on Blab, Periscope, Facebook Live, or how to create content? So Kristen, you had an announcement, and you said you share with your community about information that they everyone needs to know. What other things are you planning to post out online? So we're actually – my announcement was about we're having a national awareness day declared so i'll then be doing a facebook live from the u.s capitol uh on thursday when we're down there and um the other piece that i don't know if Jeannie told you yet that we're going to work together on one yeah addressing right. a big problem with not a big problem but you're talking about the audience 
So my event that's coming up, Cocktails for the Cure, our theme for dressing is always denim and diamonds. And I am constantly getting questions about what is denim and diamonds? So Jeannie and I are going to team up mm -hmm. and show what are some examples of cute tops and the jeans and heels and all that good stuff. Yeah. They don't want that advice from me because I'm, look at me. I do not give fashion advice. I just say wear denim and diamonds. And then my expert, Jean, will come in and show them. Yeah. Can't wait. That's awesome. Yeah. We have, we have a question for Marion on Facebook Live. How long can you record and how long should you record? I don't know if there's a limit, actually, mm -hmm. but um, I wouldn't suggest you just go on and on and on. I would, if you're doing an informational tip of the day kind of thing, I'd say one minute, 90 seconds, two minutes max. That's the typical how long should a video be? People lose kind of our attention span there. But um, Periscope is six hours is the maximum. Blab, I don't think there's a limit either. I'm not sure. Maybe it's six hours on Blab as well. Does anyone know? Never gone that long. Blabs, I'm usually 40 minutes, maybe 80, 90 minutes. No limit on Blab. Okay. Blab is limitless. You got to love it. Just stay on here all day. It's like, yeah, that would be cool if somebody did that. A marathon Blab. Just stay on forever. See what happens. <laughs> Watch them sleep. <laughs> um, but if you're... Facebook Live, easy to set up, especially for me. Tech's not my thing. Yes, Jeannie, that's true. Oh, that's you. Yeah. That oh, yeah. Be. Meerkat. Oh, somebody else is talking about Meerkat. Five hours max. Okay. Yeah. So there are other platforms. We're just going to do uh, Blab, Periscope, and Facebook Live for our challenge this week. But there is Meerkat. There's a new one called MeV, which some people like because you can push, it's easy to push out to a lot of platforms, supposedly. Haven't used it yet. I have like two followers. So it's like, do I want to invest time in creating a whole new audience on Mevi? I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Um, there's also YouTube Live, which I haven't tried. Google Hangouts, which I use, but usually private. Um, Lab, Periscope, Meerkat. Yeah, there's tons of them, right? So we're going to focus on three. Because the last time I did a free giveaway challenge, like last month, we did the SmackDown. We talked about all kinds of marketing, and I talked about everything from networking to social media to like every people were a little like it's too much information. <laughs> so we're gonna narrow it down. So uh, Jeannie, what do you think you're gonna be focusing your content on, my friend? Well, I also have like tons of notes, <laughs> so I guess I need to use my Evernote. I think it's just gonna be. Um, for instance, I get a lot of question of what shoes do I wear with the straps or what shoes do I wear with these skinny jeans? So that's going to be one. Definitely. Yeah. Um, my big thing is, is what color is best for you? And so that there's that. And now we're transitioning into spring. What one item do you need that doesn't cost a lot of money that can really flex you over? So things like that. Okay, that's excellent. Yeah, I definitely, I'm going to tune in too. How about you, Tina? Do you have uh, ideas on content? Well, that's what I struggle with. Well, I know my content. It's just that whether these platforms are appropriate for me is the question because I'm constantly demonstrating things and using my hands because people ask me questions like, what's the matter with my plant? And there's always a photo accompanied with the right. question. So that is going to be the challenge for me is getting the information across without so any visuals. So you may want to do webinars yeah. instead, actually. So yeah. Webinars, yeah that, you know, that's that another way to live stream. But a webinar is the structure of a webinar is different in that people expect more of a training with slides and a very structured presentation. Whereas the lab, you're having mm -hmm. a conversation. It kind of goes off in different directions. As long as you stay kind of on the topic that people are coming to see, um, you're good, right? Right, right. Okay, so then we have uh, somebody saying that YouTube streaming is limited, limitless. They saw Joel Com on Mevi, Facebook Live, and Blab all at the same time. It was fascinating. That's cool. Yeah, I've done Periscope and Blab at the same time. And 
there's, I think there's so much to, one of the things that people say when they do a Periscope is that there's so much to focus on. You're trying to do, deliver content, be on mm -hmm. camera, watch the comments, reply to the comments. It's like so multitasking already. And then to throw in blab, I don't know if you're really good at that, go for it, why not? Um, yeah, so Tina, you did mention something about which platform is right. So that is one thing we haven't talked about yet. So you need to think about who's on each platform and which one would, where is your audience hanging out, right? So once you identify your, who you serve, where are they? Oh, Lisa Men's hello. Let's see, Facebook Live, do videos on your personal page or business page? Business page doesn't get many views. Well, the business page, you, I don't think you can do it on your business page unless you're a verified public figure, my friend. So let's see if that's changed. Yeah, I had to do it on my personal. Okay. So let's see what we got. I'll go to my business page and see. It changes all the time, so you got to stay up with this stuff. But. All right, so I'm going to go publish. No, it's not available on my business page. So I couldn't even do that if I wanted to, Lisa. But I, can you, I'm sorry, can the videos be taken from Facebook, like a link, and use them elsewhere? If you say, like on your you website? You can automatically save it to your phone and then upload it okay. from your phone to YouTube. Oh, as soon okay, as you good. end your uh, Facebook Live, it says, do you want to save to your phone? And you click yes. Okay, okay great. All right. Yeah, so think about which, which platform, not just, you want one that you're comfortable with, you like the technology that your audience is on, or where you want to build an audience, and that makes sense. So Tina, if you want to do a demonstration, it's very structured, maybe webinars are for you. But I think the tip right. that you did on Friday about you know what plant can you buy in February, so it adds some color, that was great. It's perfect for your audience. We have no idea what kind of plant would work right now. So it was great. It seems like it's such a simple thing. Sometimes people, they know so much, they don't know how to narrow it down to this little tips and content. They're like, I know everything. <laughs> yeah, so a horticulturalist spending a minute talking about this one kind of plant to add the color red to my kitchen seems so silly, but it was like, oh my God, I totally get one of those. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Does anyone, has Facebook Live started for iPads yet? Does anyone know? I use it on my iPad. I can't get it on my phone. There you go. The answer is yes. iPad has Facebook Live. Perfect. Can Tina use a tripod or something to hold her phone so she can broadcast? Um, on Facebook Live, you mean, Jeannie? You yeah. can talk. <laughs> I have any questions. She's right here. I want to face off my That's what yeah. I want to know. I don't want to look at me anymore. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, all right. Thanks, Mary. If you signed up with that link above, um, you can participate in our challenge. So what we're going to do is we're going to have each of you pick at least one platform. If you want to do try all three, go for it. Um, I will send emails each day with some tips based on what I see you guys doing. And then I'll share out some videos. Okay. And then we'll regroup on Monday at nine back on Blab. Talk about what worked, what didn't, what you learned, any other tips that we haven't covered yet. So what do you think, uh, Kristen? You're sticking with Facebook Live and Blab for your meetings? Yeah, I'll probably stick with both of those. I just don't have the time. Now, I tried to learn Periscope, but then Blab came in, and it worked so perfectly that I'm just going to roll with, with both of those, and especially the Facebook Live. I'm just sitting here thinking we also are doing – tomorrow we have a planning meeting for our event. And we're gonna do a behind the scenes type of Facebook Live with that. It's just this video stuff, people are just so much more interested than reading my stuff or even um, you know, when you post a photo and all that kind of stuff. And I think Facebook is really pushing it out there, is they're they're holding all of our other content, but they really want this out there. So yeah. I'm gonna jump in and capitalize. Right. Well, Facebook's whole thing is that they, it's about storytelling. Mm -hmm. So videos really fit into that storytelling mission of theirs. Jeannie, what about you? Which platform are you going to pick if just uh, one? Totally Facebook Live. Facebook Live, okay. So Gina, me, what do you got? Yeah, it's intuitive. I'm going to do Facebook okay. Live as well because I like that you can upload them to YouTube because I have a YouTube okay. channel. Great. That's perfect. Yeah, repurposing your content is awesome. Yeah, if you go to networknowconnections.com and go click on the blog, 
you can see a bunch of my um, prior labs that I've done with members. So when you're a featured member or you're one of my VIP guests, then it gets put onto the blog. And you can, the, the video is actually embedded. You click right on that page. You don't have to go somewhere else. So you can find it on YouTube. You can find it on the blog. You can share either of those on other platforms. All right, Rhonda, see you later, girl. So one o'clock lab with in, for Instagram today. Uh, anyone that wants to be part of the challenge to get my help this week, click on that link above here in the purple I posted, the seven-day live stream video challenge, so I can send you an email. And um, this will be good. I'm excited for you guys. It's awesome. Awesome. Anyone have anything else? Yeah. We're good? All good. All mm -hmm. right, you guys. See me? I'll see ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See ya. See ya.